Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and earlier I alluded to this, and I think I should go into a little more detail here. When it comes to ketogenic diets, a lot of you know that I've always had a mixed stance on this topic up until this year. So it's something that I have tried to keep up with all the current evidence on, all the data on, read tons and tons of studies and papers and everything else on this topic, because this is the, the single most heavily investigated diet in the medical world for the last 90 years. And it's been used and it's undisputed that it is used to treat certain conditions like epilepsy. It is actually better for certain types of epilepsy than any sort of medication that we can produce. And most neurologists will agree with that fact. And the people who take it for these or follow this sort of diet for medical reasons don't suffer health issues. And you guys know that I've always been concerned with the potential health issues. I've always said it's fantastic for fat loss. I've successfully lost 50 pounds before using a ketogenic diet uh, more than once. And so I've always advocated it for that, but only in the short term. And I've recently gone over to pretty much the last nine, 10 months, I think, something like that. I lost track of following it myself. And it's not because I decided to follow it that I said it was okay. It was that I did six months of extra research and then realized, hey, the diet is okay. It may even have some health benefits. And uh, so therefore I started advocating it for people who can tolerate the diet. This diet is not tolerable for everyone. Not everyone can do it. For me, it's easy. For some people, it's just impossible. And that's the thing with any diet. There's no such thing as a perfect diet that every human being on earth can follow. And once you realize that, then it makes these things a lot easier to, to understand and digest. But yeah, ketogenic diets have been used to treat quite a few different medical conditions. I started messing with it and it helped me lose weight, but didn't help with my Meniere's disease when I was reading that some ENTs were finding that their Meniere's disease patients were seeing improvements on the ketogenic diet. So I started using it again in combination with fat loss, but it didn't seem to help much with my condition at the time. So it didn't help me there, but it's definitely been used to treat Alzheimer's, uh, again, with some success. And now more recently, in recent years, it's, they've found that ketogenic diets are helpful in treating certain types of cancers when combined with other therapies like radiation therapy or chemotherapy. And they, what they found is that when it's combined with them, they have a higher success rate than if they put them on a different type of diet they actually have a higher success rate of curing cancers and people surviving when they put them on ketogenic diets for about 60% of types of cancers. I believe that was a number, roughly 60%, when combined with these other treatments. It seems to accelerate the process. And there's a couple different theories on this. This was originally proposed because ketogenic diets tend to lower overall circulating insulin levels and circulating blood glucose levels. And we know that tumors tend to be, particularly cancerous tumors obviously, tend to be extremely insulin sensitive. They attract insulin at a higher rate than most other tissues do in the body. So if you can lower overall insulin sensitivity, you can reduce cancer rates. The same process by which weightlifting does. It's like I've, I've discussed in the past, the data out there showing uh, weightlifting reduces cancer rates by 50%. Ketogenic diets can help through the exact same mechanism. You just have less circulating insulin to feed the tumors. Your body will always try to fight cancerous tumors. We will all get cancer at some point in our life, some of us many, many times. It's a matter of can your body defeat it or not before it gets out of control. And the ketogenic diets help lower circulating insulin levels so that you get less calories, less glucose, less food to the tumors. And, and that's the whole idea. You're restricting that. So they thought they would study it. And they found uh, that, again, it can help with cancer. So that's something that further studies started being done on. And what the experts have found on this, the doctors using it to treat this, have found another component of the ketogenic diet that helps with this. It's not just the lower insulin levels and then potentially the lower IGF-1 levels circulating in the bloodstream. There is another component to it. The actual ketones themselves seem to reduce tumor size in certain types of cancers. It's not across the board, but certain types of cancers, the actual presence of high amounts of ketone bodies in the bloodstream actually negatively affect these cancer cells. And why that is, I don't actually know. I don't know if the reason has been determined. That's something I'll try to keep up with and allow uh, all of you guys to know it once I learn what's going on with it. But I don't know the mechanism by which that happens. I have no clue how that could be the case, but it seems to be the case based upon the research that's out there. So if that's the case, then there's two different mechanisms. And in fact, what uh, has been proposed as future research and their the doctors trying to get grants for it now is actually injecting ketones directly into cancer patients instead of just a ketogenic diet, actually adding additional ketone bodies to their bloodstream to see if that will also help reduce tumor size 
and that might actually end up being in the long term just as viable of a treatment for cancer, certain types of cancers, as the ketogenic diet itself is. So the whole idea of, again, people like Furious Pete who suffered from cancer using a ketogenic diet combined with weightlifting to help reduce their chances of developing cancer again or to fight cancer isn't unreasonable at all based upon the data out there. There actually seems to be a couple of different pathways in the body by which ketogenic diets actually can fight cancer or, or help with it. And so therefore it makes a lot of sense. And so for people who are wondering what's going on with that, why people would do that, that's what the data is showing. Those different pathways are the mechanisms by which ketogenic diets can help with cancer. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.